The sun was pouring through the windows like liquid gold, casting intricate patterns on the desks. The air was thick with the scent of chalk and the subtle undertones of teenage angst. I was sitting there, lost in my thoughts, when Mr. Williams cleared his throat. All right, students, we have a new student joining us today. This is Tim. As the door creaked open, in walked Tim. He was a slight figure, his eyes darting nervously as he stepped into the room. His backpack seemed almost too big for his slender frame, and he clutched a notebook tightly in his hands. The room went silent. All eyes were on him, including mine. Isn't that the autistic kid? Yeah, so what? Emily's eyes met mine, and in that moment, something unspoken passed between us. Her voice was barely above a whisper, but laden with a weight that made me pause. The tension in the room was palpable, like the charged air before a thunderstorm. Tim took a seat at an empty desk, his eyes focused on the notebook in front of him. He did look up, but you could feel the weight of the room's collective gaze pressing down on him. Mr. Williams resumed his lecture, but the atmosphere had shifted. The air was heavier now, laden with questions and judgments, possibilities and prejudices. As I turned my attention back to the front of the room, I couldn't shake the feeling that something significant had just occurred. The chess club room was a sanctuary of quietude, a stark contrast to the bustling hallways of Oak Ridge High School. The room was dimly lit, the soft glow of table lamps casting a warm, amber hue over the chess boards. I was sitting there, contemplating my next move when the door creaked open. Tim walked in, hesitating at the threshold as if contemplating whether to enter this hallowed space. Finally, he took a step forward, his eyes scanning the room before landing on me. You should move your queen to E5. His voice was tinged with a nervous energy. For a moment, the room faded away, and it was just the two of us locked in a silent confrontation. I don't need advice from you. My voice was dripping with disdain. Tim's eyes dropped, the weight of my words pressing down on him like a heavy burden. He turned away, retreating to the back of the room. Checkmate. I had lost, and the weight of that loss sank deep within me like a stone at the bottom of a lake. I glanced towards Tim, who was still sitting alone. What if I had listened? What if I had put aside my prejudice and opened my mind to the possibility that Tim had something valuable to offer? The atmosphere in our living room was tense. Mom sat across from me, her eyes filled with a mixture of concern and disappointment. I couldn't look her in the eyes. I felt like a defendant waiting for a verdict. Jake. How could you treat Tim like that? He's your brother. Her words cut through the tension like a knife. I felt cornered, defensive. What? He's a burden, Mom. I said it without thinking, my voice rising in pitch. I could see the disappointment in her eyes, and it stung. Autism is not a disability, it's a different ability. Her words hung in the air, challenging me to see the world differently. I rolled my eyes, skeptical. Different ability? Mom, that's just a nice way of saying he's not normal. I was pushing back, but deep down, I knew I was on shaky ground. Do you remember your grandfather, Jake? He used to say, I don't have a disability, I have a different ability. I see the world from a different angle. Her voice trembled as she spoke. I felt a pang of guilt, a realization that I had been so wrong. So what do you want me to do? Include him, or you're grounded. Ah. Oh. I sighed. The weight of my decision pressed down on me. I had to make a choice. And for the first time, I chose to see him not as a burden, but as my brother. The classroom was buzzing with anticipation. Mr. Williams stood at the front, a white bod marker in hand. Today was the day of the math competition, a classroom tradition that had taken on a life of its own. Another math competition today. Who will represent your team? The room erupted. Everyone wanted to be the hero, the mathlete who'd solved the final problem. But my eyes were on him, sitting alone, doodling in his notebook. Tim Will. I said it. The room fell silent. I felt like I just dropped a bomb, but it was a bomb of opportunity, of change. Tim stood up, his posture straight, his eyes filled with a newfound confidence. He walked to the front of the room, and I felt like I was watching a movie scene unfold. 
Tim picked up the marker and stared at the problem. The room was holding its collective breath, and then he did it. He solved the problem. That's correct. Well done. Your team gets the extra credit points for the next test. Mr. Williams' voice was filled with pride. The room erupted into applause, but the real victory was much bigger than extra credit points. Tim and I locked eyes. It was as if the walls that had once separated us had crumbled. This was a victory for humanity, a testament to the transformative power of love and acceptance. The basketball court was a battlefield. We were down by one point, and the weight of impending defeat was suffocating. Emily dribbled the ball, her eyes scanning the court. Then she passed it to me. We're one point away from losing. What do we do? I hesitated. My eyes darted across the court, and then I saw him, Tim, standing on the sidelines. Tim, you're in. I said it. Tim looked shocked, but then he stepped onto the court. The crowd fell silent. The atmosphere was thick with anticipation. Tim took his position. I passed him the ball. Time seemed to stand still. He caught it and took aim. The ball left his hands, soaring through the air like a bird taking flight. The crowd held its breath, and then, with a swish, the ball went in. The crowd erupted. Tim was lifted onto the shoulders of his teammates. This was more than just a game, more than just a victory. Tim and I locked eyes. The walls that had once separated us had crumbled. This was a moment of transformation, a testament to the power of love and acceptance. As we walked off the court, arms draped around each other, we both knew this was just the beginning, a first step on a journey guided by the transformative power of a love that knows no bounds. The atmosphere at home was electric. I was sitting on the sofa, my eyes glued to the TV screen, but my mind was a whirlpool of thoughts. Chess games, math competitions, basketball matches, each a stepping stone on a journey of self-discovery. Then the door creaked open. Tim walked in, his face flushed with the excitement of the day's events. He sat next to me, and our eyes met. It was a look that spoke volumes. Mom, you were right. Tim isn't a burden, he's a blessing. I broke the silence. I had to admit it. Tim wasn't what I had thought. He was so much more. I'm glad you see that now. Can I play chess with you, Chief? Tim's voice was tinged with a nervous excitement. How could I say no? Of course. But be warned, I might just take your advice this time. As we set up the chessboard, I felt this was more than just a game. It was a symbol of our newfound bond. We made our first moves. The weight of the past lifted, like a fog that had finally cleared. We both knew this was just the beginning. Man, this whole thing's been a trip. You know that saying, don't judge a book by its cover? I totally get it now. Used to be quick to label stuff, people, whatever caught my eye. But seeing Tim's ups and downs makes you realize everyone's got their own story, their own hustle. Gotta remember to look beyond the cover, you know? Promise me you'll give people a real shot too, alright? Hey, if you vibe with this story, drop your thoughts in the comments below.